Uh, I am pleased to be able to announce today that the government has undertaken to engage in a continuing process of constructive dialogue with my mandate in an effort to improve this draft legislation before it is placed before Parliament. There is still time to get it right and for it to become the cornerstone of a new democratic order in Sri Lanka. The Minister of Foreign Affairs has undertaken to consult with my team in Geneva, initiating the process of ongoing consultation within the next two weeks, with the aim of identifying the flaws in the current draft frame and seeking solutions for putting them right. To conclude, uh, then, it is necessary to stand back and look at the picture uh, as a whole. There have been many statements of good intention but so far little in the way of effective action to bring about a lasting and just settlement to Sri Lanka's conflict, one which commands the confidence of all sections of the community. It seems that some small steps are now at last being taken in that direction. My plea to the government and the people of Sri Lanka is to let those steps be the right steps and not to allow the process to be diverted by retrograde elements in the security establishment and their allies in government. When the two sides of the accountability equation are viewed side by side, the resulting picture is a stark one. The government has thus far done almost nothing to hold to account those members of the armed forces and security services who committed gross human rights violations during and since the conflict. At the same time, it has until now continued to operate the cruel and unjust PTA system, a system that has overwhelmingly impacted on the Tamil community. These are precisely the conditions likely to produce festering grievances, to foster unrest and even uh, to reignite conflict.